It has been a creepy, crawly, slow motion invasion over the last couple of centuries. European green crabs scuttling across our ocean floors in increasing numbers. Green crabs are probably one of the most successful invasive species in North America. They've gotten a lot of attention because they are so abundant, they are devastating the local shellfish on which they feed, clams, mussels, and oysters. Gabriella Brat is fishery specialist at the University of New Hampshire and New Hampshire Sea Grant. In New England, we used to have really cold, cold, deep, freezing winters that lasted forever. <laughs> and we don't get them anymore. We don't get those deep frosts. Mm. And that's really the only thing that can really kill a lot of them all at once. Brat has been working with local fishermen and chefs trying to develop a market for the crabs as food, fertilizer, or as an additive in pet food. We're the utmost predator of anything that lives in the ocean, right? So let's eat these things. Enter Will Robinson from tiny Tamworth, New Hampshire, who suggested drinking them instead. This is artisanal production, right? This is handcrafted from the very get-go, every, every step of it. Tamworth Distilling has earned a reputation for fine craft spirits and for delving into some unusual flavor profiles like turkey-flavored whiskey and venison-flavored whiskey, even eau de musk which uses beaver castorium, which is an excretion from a beaver's anal gland, if you'll forgive me. So, as you can imagine, the idea of green crab whiskey wasn't much of a stretch. Robinson, with a varied background as musician, distiller, and environmental educator, liked the idea of a product that helps put a small dent in the green crab problem. So he reached out to Dr. Brott, asking, I'm just curious, has anybody ever used green crabs in a spirit? <laughs> and I was like, I don't really know if you're serious. <laughs> yeah, I said, I know it might sound crazy, but, and she was very excited. Um, so she, she was able to talk to some of her other colleagues in the field and answer questions that I had and point me to legitimate crabbers that I, could, uh, that I, I was able to source crabs from. So how do the crabs go from sea to still to sipping? I'm just taking them, making a base, essentially boiling them so, uh, at a slow simmer. Then I remove the solids and then those get composted. The liquid then is fortified with a little bit of our neutral grain spirit and then we distill it on the vacuum still. Add in a special blend of eight spices and the finished product is... It's a funkiness that's just on the, it's just right there where you're on your periphery. Is that in the marketing material? There's a funkiness. Well, that's what I say. Is it's a spice and funk. Spice and funk. Spice and Here's funk. the spice and funk. However you describe it, green crab whiskey has been a hit, both for its flavor and its positive environmental impact. Robinson likes to joke there are two crabs in every bottle. And while that may not solve the green crab problem, it does raise awareness and help to develop a fledgling fishery. Anything that you can remove won't stay in there and it won't be reproducing. And so the more people who do their part in a little bit, I think more of an impact we can make. So how did it taste? Well, Anthony says it was like a good whiskey with a hint of a New England seafood boil. Will Robinson says they've been surprised by all the attention on the crab whiskey, so they'll definitely be making more. Dr. Broad is also working to develop a soft shell crab industry with the hope of one day getting those green crabs onto New England dinner plates. Up next.